Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our Parish Eucharist for the second Sunday of Lent. Uh, it's a glorious late winter or early spring morning with the light coming through the stained glass and through the plain glass, um, making lovely effects in the, in the building, which you may see on camera in the course of this service. Uh, I'm joined with the saints living, uh, a goodly number today, and of course we're always joined with the saints departed and all the company of heaven. I hope this finds you well and that you will find some food for thought and uh, something else for your spiritual sustenance during this season of Lent. Please stand and enjoy me. Father eternal, 
giver of light and grace, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in what we have thought, in what we have said and done, through ignorance, through weakness, for our own deliberate fault. We have wounded your love and marred your image in us. We are sorry and ashamed and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and lead us out from darkness to walk as children of light. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, you show to those who are in error the light of your truth, that they may return to the way of righteousness. Grant to all those who are admitted into the fellowship of Christ's religion, that they may reject those things that are contrary to their profession, and follow all such things as are agreeable to the same. For our Lord Jesus Christ is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit. God now and forever. Amen. Amen. The epistle is written in the fourth chapter of St. Paul's Epistle to the Romans, beginning at the 13th verse. For the promise that he would inherit the world did not come to Abraham or to his descendants through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. If it is the adherents of the law who are able to be the heirs, faith is null, and the promise is void. For the law brings wrath, but where there is no law, neither is there violation. For this reason it depends on faith, in order that the promise may rest on grace and be guaranteed to all his descendants not only to the adherents of the law, but also to those who share the faith of Abraham. For he is the father of all of us, as it is written, I have made you the father of many nations. In the presence of the God in whom we believe, who gives life to the dead and calls into existence the things that do not exist, hoping against hope, he believed that he would become the father of many nations, according to what was said, so numerous shall your descendants be. He did not weaken in faith when he considered his own body, which was already as good as dead, for he was about a hundred years old, or when he considered the barrenness of Sarah's womb. No distrust made him waver concerning the promise of God. But he grew strong in his faith as he gave glory to God, being fully convinced that God was able to do what he had promised. Therefore his faith was reckoned to him as righteousness. Now the words, it was reckoned to him, were written not for his sake alone, but for ours also. It will be reckoned to us who believe in him who raised Jesus our Lord from the dead, who was handed over to death for our trespasses and was raised for our justification. This is the word of the Lord. stand for the gospel reading. The Lord be with you. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Jesus began to teach his disciples that the Son of Man must undergo great suffering 
and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes, and be killed, and after three days rise again. He said all this quite openly, and Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But turning and looking at his disciples, he rebuked Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. He called the crowd of his disciples and said to them, If any wants to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake and for the sake of the gospel will save it. For what would it profit them to gain the whole world and forfeit their life? Indeed, what can they give in return for their life? Those who are ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of them the Son of Man will also be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. This is the Gospel of the Lord. May the words of my mouth and the thoughts of all our hearts be now and ever accepted in my sight. O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Please be seated. Don't worry, I haven't got a huge long lecture that I'm going to read. I'm just, I need to refer to some of the texts and to uh, the message on my cue sheet, which is often a much more effective substitute for anything I may utter at this position here, about 18 inches of other contradiction. I think it's fair to say that our net groups, uh, well, A, were a bit smaller this week, and B, had a rather more problematic text to deal with. Uh, and uh, you can understand maybe why Peter got it wrong again. Just before I delve into the Gospel reading, which I think has a few clues as to how we can lead our Lent, just a little word about, um, again, a very problematic passage from St Paul's letter to the Romans, which uh, is quite difficult to read because Paul writes in such an animated and densely kind of punctuated way. The punctuation is put in by, by scholars, but it just helps to break up his very, very energetic prose. So Paul, when he talks about the law, uh, can give the impression that the law is bad uh, and that the spirit is what we need to live by, and that also sometimes the flesh is bad and that we need to live by the spirit. But none of those things is intrinsically bad. Uh, we need law for regulation and, and order. It's just when the law, the incredibly prescriptive and pedantic, the nitty gritty of the law, gets in the way of what we know to be just and right. Paul is always thinking about what is the just outcome. And the just outcome always comes by God's grace, likewise with the flesh. It's not uh, our human nature and our bodies that are intrinsically problematic. It's what we do with them and whether we are driven by selfish, sometimes primal desire. Anyway, we could have a whole series of homilies on Paul and the law. But of course, it's precisely that law, is it not, that's going to be behind Jesus' death. It's the very leaders of the religion of which Jesus was a very faithful adherent that are going to cause him to die, that are going to cause him to be martyred on the cross on Good Friday. You'll notice perhaps that Jesus describes himself here as the Son of Man, not as the Messiah. Son of Man is, here's your fancy phrase the week, it's a, Christo it's a Christological title. Son of Man, Son of God, Messiah, are all phrases that Jesus uses of himself. But Jesus here is deliberately avoiding the use of Messiah, anointed one, but actually still Peter falls into the trap. Peter cannot believe that their leader, 
who is there to bring in the kingdom of God, who is there to free them from the yoke of colonial, imperial occupation and impression, and from the sclerosis of the religious authorities. He cannot believe that the Messiah is going to be killed and put to death. That's because Peter and many of his followers would have been expecting something perhaps like we had 2,000 years later in the Arab Spring. Not a military coup, such as we had in Myanmar recently, but a great movement of the people that may or may not be violent, but certainly it would be aggressive and it would be energetic and it would involve movement, it would involve a bit of argy-bargy and hustle and tussle. It would be a kind of civil war, civil disobedience. But that's not what Jesus has in mind. That is not the messiahship that Jesus conceives for himself. In St John he says, my kingdom is not of this world. You remember when as things are being drawn to a close uh, and he's there before Pilate. So Peter gets it wrong. But Peter is there in kind of in place of us. Like Peter, people that get it wrong. We are those rocks, those pebbles, those stones upon which the church is built today. We're as good as it gets for God, the Father Almighty in heaven. And it's because Peter was setting his mind on human things, not on divine things. Peter is imagining you know, a military, a quasi-military, paramilitary kind of revolution. That is not the kingdom, that, uh, that is not the means by which Jesus brings in the kingdom. Now, the centre of this piece of reading from Mark is, of course, the cross. And he says, If any wants to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For well, those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake and for the sake of the gospel will save it. The cross. The Greek word for cross uh, is stareos, um, and it's transliterated uh, into English sometimes, as you see at the front of the Pugin, as stabrios. We have on the front there a poly. Stabrio, many of them. Now, if stab, stabrio sounds a bit similar to the Greek name Stavros, well, that's deliberate because anybody called Stavros is actually named after the cross. So, you know, it's a bit of a joke sometimes, isn't it? And I don't mean to offend if your Greek taxi driver called Stavros, uh, sometimes contracted to Stav, not to be confused with the Hebrew word for autumn. Uh, Stavros actually means cross. Uh, it's rarely used in feminine form. So the cross. The cross is, runs in two planes, isn't it? It runs in the vertical plane, it runs in the horizontal plane. And uh, as Jesus' feet are bound, if not nailed, to the cross, um, his movement is restricted. That's where he is. He'd rather be somewhere else, as indeed sometimes we would rather be somewhere else. And ha Jesus has to stretch his body on the cross in order to keep his trachea, his windpipe, straight so that he can breathe, he can respire. So that's one source of tension. And then, of course, the other source of tension is the horizontal plane, where we have, if you like, the expectations of the world, the selfish, commercial, greedy world, Maybe what people might expect of us through peer pressure, something like that, stretches in that direction. And then we have what we know we're called to do as disciples of the gospel, stretching ourselves in that direction. So that's how we are stretched. Our lives are cruciform. So that is what we need to do. Now, losing our life, again, a little few little bits and bobs get lost in translation here. But Jesus is not saying so much, and Mark doesn't intend that it's our purely mortal lives of our hearts beating and our endocrinal system working, because the word that's used a little bit ambiguously in the text is psuche, 
uh, psuche, uh, begins with the Greek letter psi. And it's from where we get our words psychology and psyche. So the life that we're required to lose may be, unfortunately, our physical lives, as it is in the case of martyrs. But actually, the life that we're required to lose is the one that gets in the way of the preservation of the development of our souls, our souls, our inner beings, our psyches. That's what we need to conserve, but we need to give up those parts of our life that get in the way of the preservation of our souls. That's what Jesus is saying. It's used a bit ambiguously, and sometimes it's not that very helpful. And I, for goodness sake, I don't expect all of you to go to an O-level in Greek. But just beware of what you see printed in English, because sometimes it's only an approximation of something that was intended by the writer and for which there's no equivalent in English. So our lives are required to be cruciform. So actually, by living our lives, we already have those crosses on our backs. The other thing about religious language and theology is that it's poetry. You need to use your imagination to let your imaginations run. So that's difficult. It's been very difficult for us over these last few months. Our lives, in a most unusual way, have been truly cruciform, uh, locked down by government regulation, knowing that, well, yes, we ought not to do uh, something, but yes, we want very much to do it. And indeed, uh, uh, people like me even have certainly and here I am shooting myself in the foot, I've certainly pushed the envelope of the regulations in order to maintain my well-being. It's been really, really, really tough. I like to think I'm fairly tough and regulate myself quite well. It's been very, very tough for people. We have to bear our crosses all the time. Now, the reason for the image on the front of the pew sheet today, this icon, this polystabrion, Poly being uh, a prefix, uh, meaning many, like uh, polychromatic, many uh, colours, uh, polyphonic, many sounds, as in music, poly, and then stabrion, so many crosses. As you can see, the disciples, the apostles, are following Christ who's carrying his cross, but do you notice how all of them are actually supporting one another? So you can be, you know, a martyr if you want, and how we use the word martyr in a wrong kind of way. He will, he will say we've got our crosses to bear. Well, sometimes it's just a way of saying, oh, well, this is a bit of a drudge, but I've not really thought it through. The point is, and this icon reminds us, is that we are a community of cross bearers. And yes, we bear the weight of our own cross, but by mutual love and support and discipleship, that load is spread a little bit more evenly. If you like, it can be an example of a problem shared so let's all of us share our cruciform lives, which means that we have to be as honest sometimes and as generous as we dare, following the example of the one who was so supremely generous for our benefit and for our salvation, even unto death. And of course, death leads to resurrection. So by this sharing, May our suffering be transformed into everyday examples of resurrection and transformation. Thanks be to God. Amen.
matters wherever we stand to affirm our faith in responsorial Athanasian Christ. Do you believe and trust in God, the Father, the source of all being and life, the one to whom we exist? Do you believe and trust in God, the Son, who took our human nature, died for our sin, and raised again? Do you believe and trust in God, the Holy Spirit, who gives life to the people of God and makes Christ the name in the world? Do you this is the faith of the Church. Let us pray to God, who is the light of the world. We sit on the altar. living stones by God appointed each to our allotted place we pray for faithful discipleship and the servant of God's purposes for us this Lent and in perpetuity we pray for our brethren in the Iglesia Anglicana de la Reggio Central de America Brothers and sisters in the Diocese of Canterbury and in the Church of Ireland in the Diocese of Down and Drone. And we pray for our local church, the Diocese of Manchester, for our bishops, David, Mark, and Mark, for the process of discernment in guiding this church to the next phase of its witness, and giving us strength and fortitude for the many challenges that face us. And we pray for this parish of Newton Heath, for its people, for its work and its mission. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the world, governed by frail and feeble humans doomed to die, Pray for those parts of the world that seem not to appear in our news headlines anymore because of the pandemic. We continue to pray for the people of the Yemen, for peace, stability, and justice in Israel and Palestine, for the country of Myanmar, formerly known as Burma. Pray for our Queen, thanking God for her life of devotion and service, for her government. We pray for all who are on elected office, especially in the city of Manchester, that it may continually be guided by a spirit of public service rather than private gain. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for this parish. We pray for the schools of it, bracing themselves for a full return on March the 8th. We pray for our church schools, for the saints and St. Wilfrid's. Pray for the other schools which our young people attend, Frisco Lane Academy, Christ the King, Co-op Academy Broadhurst, Oldham Bluecoat, Trinity High School, Hopwood Hall College, and St Ambrose College. We pray for teachers, their support staff and administrators, and all those who've been struggling with the balance of work and home time and education. 
Lord, in mercy. God has forgiven us our sins, yet there are still some things which cause us anxiety, that get in the way of a true relationship with our Father in Heaven. We offer those things up before Him now, uncomfortable patterns of thought, aches and pains in our bodies, our concerns about other people. Within this church family, we pray before God for God's healing help with Janet Wilson, recently undergone surgery, and then for Andrea Watts, who's received treatment for the alleviation of pain, soon to return home. We pray for medical professionals, hospitals, walk-in centres, GP practices, and all who exercise care in the community as accredited professionals or as compassionate carers responding to a sense of duty and love. Lord, in your mercy. We give thanks to God for those who have gone before us in the faith of Christ those upon whose shoulders we stand. We pray for the repose of the soul of John Jenkins. And we give thanks for the life of Dennis Pope, whose funeral is to be held here on Wednesday week. We pray for those who mourn their loss most keenly. Or as they are, they are at rest with all the saints in Christ. And among those whose anniversaries occur at or around this time, we name Sarah White, Eric Taylor, Lillian Vickers, Clifford Boone, Thomas Dolby, John Mason, Oliver Hartwell, Terence Nelling, Jack Longbottom, Thomas Joint, Sarah Etchells, and David Attenborough. Rest eternal grant unto them, O Lord, and let thy perpetual shine upon them. Merciful Father, I accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. As we're able, let's stand to show the peace. Since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us access to his grace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Let's offer one another a COVID-compliant sign of peace. As the grain once scattered in the fields and the grapes once dispersed on the hillside and are reunited on this table in bread and wine, so Lord, may your whole church soon be gathered together from the corners of the earth into your kingdom. Amen. The Lord be with you. Also Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. 
it is indeed right and good to give you thanks and praise. Almighty God and everlasting Father, through Jesus Christ, your Son. For in these forty days you lead us into the desert of repentance, that through a pilgrimage of prayer and discipline we may grow in grace and learn to be your people once again. Through fasting, prayer, and acts of service, you bring us back to your generous heart. Through study of your holy word, you open our eyes to your presence in the world and free our hands to welcome others into the radiant splendor of your love. As we prepare to celebrate the Easter feast, with joyful hearts and minds we bless you for your mercy. And join me, saints and angels, forever praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We sit on here as we recall the words of institution. Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit, and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ who, in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave him thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave him thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen, Christ will come again. <clears throat> and so far, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, for rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption. As we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people, and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup, so that we, in the company of the Blessed Virgin Mary, St. Wilfrid, St. Anne, St. Cuthbert, and all the saints, may praise and glorify you forever. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, honour and glory be yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray with confidence, as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us.
us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, bearer of our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, redeemer of the world, give us your peace. Join me with faith to receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave me, and his blood which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that he died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Most merciful Lord, your love compels us to come in. Our hands are unclean, our hearts are unprepared. We were not fit even to eat the crumbs under your table. But you, Lord, are the God of our salvation, and share your bread with sinners. So cleanse and feed us with the precious body and blood of your Son, that he may live in us and we in him, and that we, with the help company of Christ, may sit and eat in your kingdom. to help ourselves, 
He passed both outwardly in our bodies and inwardly in our souls, that we may be defended from all adversities which may happen to the body, and from all evil thoughts which may assault and hurt the soul, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Father of all, we give you thanks and praise that when we were still far off, you met us in your Son and brought us home. Dying and living, he declared your love, gave us grace, and opened the gate of glory. May we who share Christ's body live his risen life. We who drink his cup bring life to others. We who the Spirit lights give light to the world. Keep us firm in the hope you have set before us, so we and all your children shall be free. And that on earth live to praise you through Christ. to say, brothers and sisters, that we very, very nearly ran out of the Blessed Sacrament. I've only got one communion host to reserve today. Uh, it's been some time that that's been the case. It's uh, lovely. And we're all, I think, uh, socially distanced, um, and there's still plenty of room. And I'm sure you, like me, are a little bit excited about the potential of uh, further restrictions being lifted. Uh, but we've all got to just dig deep and ensure those around us to keep as well, so there can be nothing that frustrates uh, life getting back to whatever the new normal will be. Um, so, uh, and news on the heating, um, it's going to be at least three to five months before we get any grant funding for the heating, so um, we've got a little bit of money to buy for a rainy day. Uh, the PCC will chew over what we think we need to do with it, but we're not going to get a retrospective grant for the heating. So I'm afraid to say, until we've got it fixed, it will be off. Uh, there are other um, needs that we need also to address for which uh, our cash reserve may be more appropriately uh, used in the future. So I'm afraid there's not much prospect of the heating being on. And when it's uh, ready to go on, it will be at the time of the year when we don't need it anyway, uh, such is life. Otherwise, we're good. I took some time away to lie down in a darkened room uh, last week just to recharge my batteries, um, lower my blood pressure, uh, and just, um, just unwind a little. I was quite conscious I was becoming actually quite unwell, and I regard my uh, mental well-being as, uh, on the whole, very good. Uh, I'm quite resilient and self-disciplined, but dare I say, even for people like me, these last few weeks have been extraordinarily tough. And so I just had to uh, push the envelope of the coronavirus restrictions in order to conserve and maintain my sanity and well-being. So um, I fess up and uh, I could face the rest at any time. I don't think it'll happen. Dennis Pope's funeral will be here on Wednesday week at half past ten. Um, his uh, daughter Leslie has uh, a list of guests. I will check with her um, how we're doing for numbers. Uh, I have a few people, um, besides people, church officers, who are assisting me, who do not form part of that number. Um, I um, went to see Andrea Watts yesterday uh, at Dr. Kershaw's. She was there for some um, um, relief, uh, supervised relief of the pain that she has in her shoulder. Uh, she'll be coming home soon. We had a, a really, really good chat for uh, 45 minutes or so. She's in the spanking brand new wing of Dr. Kershaw's, which uh, is uh, finished from a building point of view. Unfortunately, there's no wireless connection in the extension, so Andrew is finding it very difficult to get onto social media. But I hope, Andrew, you'll see this uh, soon enough. And I look forward to seeing you uh, as soon as that's convenient. Uh, I have permission to mention this, but um, our former church warden, man of action, Barnick man, Alan Clark, is going into hospital for a small procedure um, on a, 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 a cardiac uh, procedure. Uh, we just hope that when a cough suddenly comes up, it doesn't change the television channels. Uh, so all the best with that, Alan, and <laughs> prayers, of course. It's great to know that um, routine surgery can still take place. Uh, I think it's fair to say that the 
pressure on our beloved NHS service, which we ought not to over romanticise. It's funded by the public purse, and so should it be. Uh, but it's good to know that things are beginning to ease off and that the National Health Service is not going to be overwhelmed. So just please um, look after yourselves. Uh, don't do anything uh, that puts yourself or other people at risk. Keep washing your hands, uh, you know, keep a safe distance, and we'll all be fine. Lovely. Well, any um, birthdays or good news that friends might want to share uh, this uh, week? Did we miss any birthdays last week? Any birthdays or good news uh, to share this week? Ronnie? Okay. That's splendid. Well, so the thought for the week, just remember that our lives are cruciform. And remember that Greek icon, the uh, uh, polystabrion, which means that we all have our crosses to bear, but let's all bear one another at the same time and share the load. A problem shared can be a problem halved. And know that actually it's all okay because all the things that bug us and worry us have been taken care of up front by that body on the tree, Christ on his cross at Calvary. Okay, we need to follow that example and maintain our interior lives and lead good lives with our physical bodies. As you're able, please stand for the blessing. The peace of God that passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you all this day and always. Go in the peace of Christ.